the Cavalry 1.1 release comes with some big updates to text, including rich text and a new feature we're calling formatting inputs. But before we get into that, let's just kick off with some of the basics. There are several ways to create a text shape. One is to click the text tool in the toolbar and then click and drag a text box out to create a text shape. Another method we can use is by holding down Alt and clicking on the text tool, a text shape is created in the center of the viewport. And lastly, we can use the quick add window. We can either invoke this by clicking the plus sign here at the top of the scene window, or the, the keyboard shortcut for that is command or control and full stop. We can simply type text, hit return, and likewise that will also create a text shape in the middle of our viewport. Let's just delete that last one. Something worth pointing out at this stage is the distinction between when a text shape has a text box that can be resized and one where it's being set automatically. So we've already got text shape 2's attribute editor UI loaded here. And if we go to the text box size attribute, we can see that auto width and auto height are both checked. And what this means is that the text box is being automatically set to fit whatever is entered into the string attribute here. If we load text shape one, you'll notice that the auto is unchecked on these two shapes. And if we just go to the text tool, you can see that this has a, a large text box and text will flow into this text box. For those of you familiar with Affinity Designer, this is the equivalent of using artistic text versus frame text, or for Illustrator users, uh, the difference is point type versus area type. And there are two key differences to consider here. The first is that with auto checked on, text will not reflow to fit within the text box. And the second is that pivot points are set differently depending on which mode is set. For example, if we load text shape two into here and change its alignment to center aligned, notice how the text has center aligned around the pivot itself. If we do the same thing on text shape one, notice how the text actually moves into the middle of the text box rather than the pivot itself. And this is something that's important to consider if you're thinking about animation. So back in our original scene, let's look at how we can interact with this text shape in the viewport itself. The quickest way to do this is to double click on the text shape and that will take us into the text tool. Alternatively, with the text shape selected, we can select the text tool and again, we're into that same mode. From here, we can resize the text box. And as you can see, the text will flow to fit. We can also transform the text itself using the widget on the top left here, or we can resize the text by using the widget on the bottom right. So this is not scaling, this is actually resizing the font size. So rich text gives us the ability to format text on a per character basis. If I double click this text to take us into the text tool, you'll notice that some of the attributes have been given this teal outline. This indicates that adjusting these attributes will affect only selected characters. So let's select the words rich and text. And then in the attribute editor, let's increase the font size to let's say 180. And then let's also just change the font as well. You'll notice that a little cross has now appeared on both the font size and the font itself. And this indicates that there are overrides set on some or all of the selection. So clicking this will remove uh, any override in there. And then of course, if we were to select something that had an override and something that didn't, you'll see that the font size has actually gone blank because that we've got two values contained in here. We can now either scrub this to set a new value for the selection, or we can simply again, just clear out the override and we're back to our default. So the next thing I'm going to talk about is a feature called formatting inputs. And what a formatting input allows you to do is to inject one text shape or string into another text shape. And they're very easy to set up. All we need to do is click the plus button here next to formatting inputs, and we're going to choose text shape from the list. You'll notice that this has not only created a new text shape here, but it's also added a zero in between curly brackets to the string attribute of our original text. So while the visibility of our text shape here is actually set to off, you'll see that the word cavalry is still appearing in the viewport. And the reason for this 
is that the zero between curly brackets is injecting the input of index zero, which in this case is our text shape we've created, into the string of our original text shape. So let's now just move the reference here to index zero. So I'm just going to cut and then I'm going to paste this to the front and add a space character. And then if we load the text shape two, which is our injected text, let's just change this word to rich. So we can now come in and we can change the uh, font size of this. We can change the uh, font if we like. Let's just change that again. Um, we can change the color. So all of this can be set based on this particular keyword that we're looking at here. We can even come in and we can add a shader to this. So let's just right click in the shader attribute, uh, add shader and choose gradient shader. And then if we just select the stop and we can just drag in some colors into each stop here. And there you can see we've created uh, a gradient on that rich text. So we can go a bit further with this and we can actually go back to the shape tab and instead of just having the string here, let's actually add a, an array to this. So we're going to add a string array and let's add a few different bits. So let's, let's bring our rich back in again and then let's go with loaded and minted. So now if I take auto index off and if we just iterate through each one of these rows, you can see we're loading loaded and minted in there. And of course, if we put this back on, if we select our original text shape and add this to a duplicator using the shelf up here, I'm just going to none in Y and then let's just swap this out a bit. You can see that we've got each one of those is being pulled through dynamically. And we don't need to stop there because the formatting inputs attribute on the text shape is a list. We can actually add more than one input to this. So let's just select text shape again as you can see we've now got the number one uh, in between the curly brackets here added to our string and if we double click we can again we can increase the font size let's just change this to in cavalry 1.1 and again we can come in and change the color and do anything we like so it's a really nice way to build your own text strings and format them in a really customized way and obviously we used an array here, um, but this actually could be, you know, data coming in from a spreadsheet as well. So really, really wide range of possibilities uh, in the way that you can use this feature. So the last feature we're going to cover in this tutorial is something called style behaviors. Now, this is really a proof of concept at this stage, as there is only one behavior we can add. But what style behaviors allow you to do is to set a range and then have anything that falls within that range be affected by the behavior. So let's show you what I mean by that. Let's just start by clicking the plus sign next to style behaviors and choosing apply font size. Double click to load its UI. And as you can see, we've got two attributes here. One that allows us to set a range and the other that allows us to set the font size. So in this instance, let's start at zero and choose a length of five. So that will incorporate the word style. And as you can see, that's already having an effect. So what's happening here is anything outside of that range is being set the font size of 155, but anything within it is being driven by this attribute here. And so we can change this. And because this is being set by a range and not by the characters themselves, we can actually come in and completely edit this string to a completely different word, but the font size is maintained regardless. So as another quick example to show you here, let's just change the length here to three. And then if we go down to the string on the text itself and click this plus sign, we can add a string generator. And then I'm gonna change the padding on this value to also be three. And now we can see that the first three numbers or the integers are all picking up the text size of 207, whereas everything else is getting our 155 that we set originally. So as we scrub this value, you can see that the numbers are all large, but updating, but everything else is staying small. Okay, lots more we could talk about for text, but that's uh, everything we're gonna cover in this tutorial. Hope you found it helpful. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below or drop by our Discord server to ask any questions 
or let us know your feature requests.